He wants to come to tag and address this body, this astute body that's going to give them the difficult questions, then by all means, whether you're establishment or not, you're welcome here. So um, I'd like to bring up Ed English. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a privilege to have an opportunity to speak to you, and I've uh, been here uh, several times. Uh, beyond that, I've known many of you for quite a while. Uh, we've worked together on a very important project, which is changing city government. And uh, I want to try to be as brief as possible so that I can save time for a little question. Uh, Justin, if you'll wave at me in about five minutes, I'll try to wrap it up so we can take a few questions. But uh, I am Ed English, and I'm running for city council in District 7, which we are sitting virtually in the middle of. And I'm running for city council for one really overarching reason. And that's because I want to be part of taking back control of this city and city government for you and I. For far too long, in fact, I would say two to three decades and get a lot of agreement on that. The decisions that have been made by city council and the city government are not in your best interest in mind. They've been made by council members and mayors that have been funded by the same group of people, real estate developers, downtown law firms, and those the, the direction of the city has certainly favored them and lined their pockets, and we need to change that. The, the, the framework has been put in place to make that change happen. I and many other very, very dedicated volunteers put literally thousands of hours over a two to three year period into getting a system that's in place now to implement that change. Uh, those same powers that we're trying to replace, they fought us tooth and nail from, from the start. They said we'd never get the petitions, uh, enough petition signatures to get it on the ballot. We proved them wrong. They said we'd never get it passed. In fact, they threw a competing proposition on the ballot in November of 2012 to confuse the voters. We'll never get it passed. We did. They said a group of they, they said a group of average citizens without the help of a lot of professionals could never draw maps that would represent the city. That was done. In fact, it's very, very rare in this state where you draw a line on a map and say this is a voting district that lawsuits don't come out of the woodwork. The maps were finalized in November, and there has not been a single legal challenge to those maps. That's, that's, that's incredibly rare. And I want to be a part of that change. I want to be a part of taking back control of this city for you and I, unless you happen to be a downtown skyscraper builder or a very, a very, high, a very high powered attorney, and then I'm sorry we have a difference of opinion. But, but the city continues to this day to make decisions that are not in your best interest or either patently illegal. Uh, if not in your best interest, whether you see the bond package that you're going to be asked to vote on for a rail project in November. Thank you very much. If you look at, if you look at what underlies the decision they made on the route for this rail, it's not to take cars off the road. It's not to reduce traffic. It's to line the pocket of developers that can build uh, very expensive projects along that route. <laughs> and in fact, what they're doing right now is they're spending your tax dollars to promote that project. That's illegal. The city can spend your money to inform you of what's on a bond package, but they're not allowed to promote that. If you started to hear the ads, I think it's very clear that they're promoting that. Something else they've done that's patently illegal. In fact, it was recently ruled so by a state judge if you looked at your utility bill, you've seen all those little, those little fees that are stacking up on the bottom, more and more of them getting bigger and bigger. That's illegal. I'll give you an example. The city made a decision to put onto your utility bill and drainage fee, or they're working on that now, and it's, it's a done deal, to pay for the buyout for the uh, homes that were damaged or lost in the Onion Creek floods. Now, whether you're for that or against that is a different decision. It's a different matter. But that decision belongs to you and I and needs to be on a ballot. We need to vote on how that money is spent. And for those reasons, I want to make a change. I want to be part of a change. And I urge you to look at more than one candidate, more than one district. Because when it comes time to make these changes, it's going to take more than one vote on the city council. It's going to be a team environment. You're going to have to have a group of people who can see common ground make progress, who have a like mind in making change that's better for all of us, not just for developers and law firms. And I'm running against several candidates in this district, District 7, who are nothing more 
than a voice for the same old establishment people. And I ask for your support in whatever form you can provide. I need your time, I need your talent, and I need your money. And if you can make donations, it'll go a long way toward helping me get elected in this district. I'm gonna leave it right there and take some questions because I got the way. exact language of it's being worked on now will probably be approved within the coming weeks. You don't have a lot of time and you're going to have to do it the old fashioned way. You're going to have to write letters, you're going to have to go down to council meetings, you're going to have to participate in what they call citizens communication when these issues come up and express your discontent with it. Sadly, the decision will be made before, and well, I say sadly, that assumes that the voters approve it. And I, right now the winds are blowing, the, this rail project is running into a stiff headwind. And you're going to see a very, very slick marketing campaign that really ramps up over the next couple of months to sell you on this idea. Uh, and the decision will be made in November. Right now, it looks like it's going to fail. There's, they're just facing too much resistance. In fact, they threw some road improvements in with the rail project as a little sugar coating on it to get more people to vote for it. But you're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way if you want to stop it before November. And uh, for, unfortunately for a uh, council prospect like me, who would take office in January, the decision will be made. Hopefully we won't have to be implementing a very poorly thought out rail project. The voters will turn it down in November. Is this only in Austin? Because I live in, uh, actually in Travis County, but I'm out in Pflugerville. Uh, is it going to affect me? In other words, is it gonna raise my taxes too? Or is, uh, am I able to vote on this? I mean, because obviously all the people down in Hayes County want to vote on it and things like that maybe, but I mean, they're going to try to put it all together so we can well, all get it, screwed together. That's a, that's a very good question, and, and it's my understanding, uh, and until the, the way I always look at bond packages are the devil's in the details. Until that bond package is actually written and you see the language of it, anything can actually, anything can actually happen. But it's my understanding right now that that will only be presented to Austin voters. There's several other transportation projects which would be voted on by a larger audience. Mary Krinick has a question. I just want to uh, make a comment that Ed worked tirelessly as a leader on 10-1, and I really thank you for all the work that you've done that. Yay! It was, it was a labor of love. I, I, I wouldn't trade a minute of it. We have time for one more question if she has a hand. I have two questions. Are you familiar with the UN Agenda 21 plan? Yes, I am. And how do you feel about it? I think a lot of things that you see going on here in Austin, a lot of decisions that have been made are, are a little spooky because they very much, and, and I am not the expert on that, but I do have some level of knowledge of, of Agenda 21, and the decisions that have been made here in Austin are uh, eerily close to the propositions put forward by the United Nations. My other question is, how do you feel about fluoridation? I'm going to answer that very honestly. I don't know enough about it. I need a little bit more of an education, but I would be very open to hearing uh, the concerns about that. I would, I, Do you I, think it's right for a city to force Medicaid its population? Yes no, or I, no? No, I don't. So that's the water. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. I, I, I really you. would love to hear more on that uh, from a scientific point of view. I'm very, very open minded. Do you think it's okay to poison the public water supply? Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much at English. Yeah. So Mary Anderson and Vincent.